Hi, this is George Alger, and welcome to today's segment of Arventura TV. Today's topic is about affordable housing in Ventura, and our guest expert is Michael Sullivan, who is the editor of the VC Reporter, and she's a resident of affordable housing here in Ventura. Welcome, Michael. Hi. This is a big topic. As a matter of fact, in terms of even opening this up, I'm going to leave this up to you. How do we, how do we broach this? It's a crisis. Yeah, okay. Um, we have ignored housing needs for a long time to maintain a quality of life. And hold on, when you say we, do you mean, is this really just Ventura or is this all county. of Southern California? It's a county. Well, because my research and reporting experience is really based Ventura County, I would not want to uh, rep you know, speak for Los Angeles or San Diego or Santa Barbara. I do know that there are problems there as well, but the focus is at least for just Ventura County as I know it. And when did this start? I don't know exactly when it started, but I did move back here in 2008. I was born here. I lived here uh, through my teenage years, and then I went off to different uh, jobs and, and um, other places to live for about 15 years. And then I came back in 2008, and I got the job at the reporter and I was looking for a place to live and there was two options in the city of Ventura and I wanted to stay in the city of Ventura where I was born and raised and there was two options and one was in a pretty poor neighborhood and the other one was in Pierpont and in Pierpont this one unit was $1,200 and it had tiles coming up off the floor, it had broken pipes, it had I don't think it was black mold, but it was something was wrong. Uh, we also had dirty carpet, and but it was on the beach, and I had lived on the beach in my uh, younger years, and so we, you know, cleaned up and tried to fix things for that. And I stayed aloof to our crisis, uh, and maybe it wasn't as bad in 2008 because that was when the market crashed and things probably remained stagnant for a little while. And then in 2013, my landlord decided she wanted us out and she ended up jacking, <laughs> raising the rent to 1200 to 1300 By the end of summer, it was going to be 1450 And then the impossible investor was going to raise this small 600 square feet, two bedroom, junky apartment to $1,600 in a matter of four months. And that put me out of a home for about six weeks until I moved into the Working Artist Ventura project. Okay. So you, uh, I know you've been investigating this topic, not only from a personal point of view, but from um, you know, a larger perspective as well. You probably have some numbers that could actually present this in terms of a crisis, as you mentioned, because I, I think many people are aware, are aware of the fact that there is issues and that rent is going up, but do you have numbers that can validate this? Well, I have all sorts of numbers on all sorts of uh, topics, uh, on all sorts of areas of this issue, but I think the most fundamental one is a 56-year-old person came up to me the other day and said, his mortgage is $800. Median rent is about $2,000. So that could give you some perspective on what an up and coming family is trying to deal with here in this job market that has consistently remained stagnant for several years. It's come out in all sorts of reports, job reports and uh, economic outlooks that's done through Cal Lutheran and through the Ventura County Civic Alliance. We have a stagnant economy, but our rent issue is it's driving people out of my demographic and my uh, age and my income level out of this community. Right, so you know, the downside of living in a desirable area is that we've got more people moving in regardless of whether the, um, you, you know, there is housing for them or not. So what do, do you, are you able to articulate some type of solution? Well, <laughs> stop being scared of traffic, of water concerns, adding and keeping up, at least in the city of Ventura, keeping up with general plan 
housing expectations where we would create a certain number of units, about 400 units a year. And you know, mind you, we did have a housing crash that put a lot of people out of the market to develop. We had some affordable housing units that came on. Uh, fair market rent, fair market rent didn't get developed. But we have this inherent fear that building will take away the water of the people who've been here already. We have an inherent fear that we're going to see way too much traffic and it's going to be too much of a headache and we don't want to be LA. But I see on a consistent basis that people who have been here a long time have kids my age and those kids aren't coming back here. Those kids create the economy because they're the ones who go out and drink and eat and buy at retail and keep an economy flowing. And this is something that is really concerning local economists here is not only do we not, are we not retaining a younger group of people, but we're not attracting employers to this area that, uh, that can provide jobs that would attract or retain younger people. And I recall a conversation with a uh, longtime friend of mine who worked at Oxnard College and she said something about how um, she was scared about young people leaving the state and leaving Ventura County because who's going to make up the tax base? So when you have yours, people who were here in 1980, 1990, were able to buy, even in the early 2000s, were able to buy, they have $1,200 of rent, of mortgage. But they're okay, and they're okay that, that that's all they need. But they don't see this bigger, broader problem of why do these restaurants keep going in and out? Why has that building been boarded up so long? Why, why is Amgen shrinking its workforce here? Why aren't we able to retain, why can't my kids come back to live here so I can see my grandchildren? They're not thinking. The only thing that seems to be happening is they're thinking in a very short-sighted way of, I'm happy and that's the way I want to keep it. And they're missing that this is a whole we're missing out on such an important part of, of, of life, of being able to keep our families close together, of being able to provide the jobs, of being able to grow an economy, to be able to grow businesses, and to see a healthy, vibrant, successful area, these communities, to grow. And, and, and the problem is we keep electing city council people in Ventura, Oxford. Oxford's not as bad, but we see different areas that say, no, no dense housing. I just want nice homes, single family homes. And despite the idea that we already have enough, enough dense housing, when your rental units are inching up 16, 17, 18, 2,000 dollars for a two bedroom, that's not practical, and it wasn't practical for them when they were our age either. So, are there any steps being taken in terms of city government and county government to ameliorate this in some way? It's not apparent. It's not apparent. There's certain laws, state laws, that require affordable housing units be built. But you can't force a developer to build. You can't force a uh, city council to fast track something. The only thing you can do is not vote for them again. And, uh, and I don't know. It's just very disheartening to feel that my, just in a very singular and granular way of looking at my contribution to the city I was born and raised in, has been devalued to such a degree that it parallels with all these other people in that age group, in that income level, which also exceeds and is less than, younger than me, that we have a very strong NIMBY uh, attitude here, and it is hurting. Not in my backyard. Yeah, don't build, and, and, and banana, which is build absolutely nothing, 
anywhere. I, I can't remember the whole thing, but if you look up banana, it's, a, it's another acronym. Build absolutely nothing. I don't know. I forget it right now. But. Well, so this is a topic that, you know, I mean, I live in Ventura, so I'm aware of it, but I'm not I'm really knowledgeable about it. But isn't there going to be some point, though, where there may be too much housing or the quality that any um, beach town has could erode if it, if, I don't know where that would be. Maybe it's a lot bigger than where we're at, but I'm wondering, is there some line where it, it actually does impact the community in a negative way? Well, it's already eroding the community because the diverse and eclectic nature of Ventura has eroded because people who originally came to this town, people who could make a living in this town, teachers and firefighters, they are already getting pushed out. So what is quality of life? We want to say it's traffic. That's what, what is it? What, what, is, what creates quality? Being able to move around faster. We have infill projects. We have soar boundaries, which is save our, our air, um, uh, uh, open spaces and agricultural resources. And that limits how big we can grow. And yet, we have plots of land all throughout this community that are not being developed. And, and they take 15, 20 years to go forward to a plant. For instance, the one that was at Seabird and Harbor, you have this big empty space. And it's great when there's festivals down there and they can park their cars down there. But it's a prime piece of, of real estate that can't get developed. And just building something there isn't going to deplete anyone's quality of life by not having an empty lot of land. Yeah. And, and not only that, it will continue to strengthen your community to have different ranges of housing. And I can understand, my brother had once lived in Redondo, and is a little hellish over there. And, and it was chaotic and uncomfortable. But Ventura County, Ventura, City of Ventura will never be like that. It just can't. It's not the size of it and, and its relationship to Santa Barbara and its relationship to LA. It just won't ever be what we've seen from Santa Monica down to Redondo and those things all meshing together. It doesn't, we've got mountain ranges and, and all sorts of things that block us from getting too close to each other. So. What, are we scared of getting too close to Oxnard? I don't, it doesn't make any sense to me, but what we're really hesitant about, other than we just don't want dense housing. So we're just about out of time here. Um, I'm wondering if there's a website that viewers can go to for more information. And if you have a summating message for the viewers, in fact, I'm wondering because this is, um, I do see it as a, you know, kind of a downer when we really look down the path, as you have um, pointed out. But is there any good news, or is there something that people could do that would, you know, that would benefit everyone in this regard? Mm. There's a few things uh, that are good news. There are a lot of people who care about my demographic and people who make less, and they are fierce and outspoken. And they're moving things forward to deal with bad policy, to deal with land use issues, to be smart about the way we develop our land. That is there, but it's slow. OK, and is there a website? Uh, as I will continue reporting on this issue and overseeing any reporting that is done on this issue, I will be reporting it through bcreporter.com. Thank you very much, Michael. Sure. Thank you. This is George Alger signing off for this segment of Our Ventura TV. Until I meet again.